Hello and good morning, I'm Morgan Donner and today I am very excited to work on a late medieval purse using late medieval reproduction fabric that I am so excited about. I really wanted to make one of these for a long time so I'm super happy to finally get to it. So I already opened up my fabric from Sartor. They are a company that does a number of historical reproduction fabric. Ah, it's so pretty guys. I purchased one yard of the fabric. Uh, that should be plenty for the purse that I'm going to make, which will only need, you know, a fairly small piece of fabric here. The purse frame that I'm using is from Billy and Charlie. They do reproduction pewter work and I have a number of their pewter badges. They're really cute and fun. Uh, and they, they do so much pewter work that their level of expertise and quality is crazy high. You guys have seen me do a few pewter projects and mine are not great <laughs> compared to people who do this, you know, all the time. So to start out with, they have given very helpful instructions and patterns to go with their frame purse, which I love. There's something about kits that is just so satisfying for me and this feels kind of like a kit. They actually do have kits available, but I kind of wanted to use this specific fabric. So they have the instruction page on the front and then they have pieces A, B, and C on the other pages. I don't have a photocopier, but they do have the file available online. So I just went ahead and printed two copies of A, two copies of C, and one copy of B. And now I think I need to tape them together. All right, let's give it a go. So it looks like next we're going to lay the lining template on the wrong side of the lining. I suppose that means I need to go pick out some lining fabric, huh? Hmm. Well, let's see what we have. So I could go with the linen that I have on the roll here, and I, I think that that would do fine, but uh, let's see what else I've got. I could do this very silvery color up here, and that would be pretty. There's also this, uh, this kind of bright blue that would be fun yeah i'm pretty tempted to just go ahead and go with my linen here the only downside with this one is that it's it is a little bit on the thin side yeah it's kind of boring but i think i am in fact going to go for the white linen here it needs to be at least this wide this is very professional It almost certainly would have made more sense for me to just pick up the roll and move it to my table, but. So here is my fabric and here is my pattern. Do I want to put some weights on this? I kind of do. I don't really have any fabric weights. I need to get some like good weighty things at some point. Oh, there we go. That'll do. Lightly trace around the template with pencil or pen. Mark points one, two, and three in seam allowance, and then cut out with a generous seam allowance. It's been quite a while since I've done anything with instructions attached. <laughs> so this is very, very fun. It's a little bit like one of those follow the dots type pictures or like color by numbers. Also very good and fun in its way. With the wrong side up, bring points two up to point three. So, and then we're gonna pin this in place. There we go. We are all pinned together. Let's see what's next. With the right sides together, pin the lining to the shell fabric. Okay, that's easy enough. Finally, take a look at the fabric in its full glory. I haven't actually unfolded it yet. 
So here is approximately what the outline of the purse is going to look like. This little flap here is going to be visible. The fashion fabric is going to be visible here. So trying to place something kind of uh, pretty or interesting, I could try maybe a flower directly in the center of that. That could be kind of cute. Um, the center of this flower would be also pretty. I can also use this as a frame of reference because this will literally be what's visible in the end, in the hole here. I think this is probably the best spot. So once I was pretty settled on where exactly I wanted that top flap design to be, I went ahead and put my lining fabric on that with the right side of the lining facing the right side of the fashion fabric and uh, went ahead and pinned all around that to keep it from moving. I then cut it out without necessarily worrying too much about whether or not I was cutting right on the same seam allowance line that the first piece was on because it doesn't really matter. Really I just want to separate it from the big chunk of fabric so that it's a lot easier to get this under my sewing machine foot. So you can, of course, hand stitch the purse closed. I'm giving myself permission to go ahead and just machine it. This fabric, man, so take a look at the back here. It's very pretty and shiny. The floating threads on this are insane. There's, whew. And you can see here, like on the edge, there's these very big pieces that are just <laughs> completely not attached to the fabric anymore. So I think that I really do want the tight stitch length that one can really, really easily achieve via machine. You can do by hand, of course, too, but nope, machine it is. So I am just going to follow the faint pencil line that I marked on the lining fabric and use that as my stitch guide. So we are all stitched up except for this last little bit so that I can turn it right side out in just a few minutes here. But first we do need to take care of all these excess edges. So I need to cut very tiny seam allowances on this. And then for all of the little nooks and crannies and the corners, I'm going to need to do some clipping and what have you so that they lay nicely whenever we're done. So that is all nice and ironed and beautiful. So next up, we're gonna thread our ribbon boop, through the edge of our purse end. So I am just piercing all the way through the paper and marking the white linen lining. Okay, I think that'll do. Now I just need a big needle to thread my ribbon through. Let's go ahead and cut this at an angle, which will make it a little bit easier to thread on the needle. There we go. The first stitch should start inside on the lining side. To be honest, it probably wouldn't be the worst idea to go ahead and uh, do eyelets around each of these entrance and exit points for our lacing ribbon, but uh, your girl ain't got time for that, so let's keep going. So we are going to knot both ends of our ribbon so that they can't accidentally come undone from out all those holes. Come on, let's go. So now we want to pull on the middle one approximately like that, and then we're going to thread this with a pair of beads. Hmm, beads. I have this little white bead. Can I thread through it? I can, okay. Now can I thread both of these through that? Nope, it doesn't want to go through. Okay, 
So we're going to do this. This hopefully is a little bit thinner than that double. Let's see if that works. Oh. Close. Can I pull this through? Aha! Okay. So next we're going to stitch our little pewter frame onto the end of the fabric here. So I think that the gray thread worked really well. I actually went ahead and tried as best as possible to make a very neat, almost back stitch so that on the underside of the flap, it's one complete unbroken stitch line. Uh, and then on the front, the stitch only shows on the, the little frame bits. So now for the next bit, I need to actually sort of slide the back up in front of this little bar piece up here. The part that looks kind of like a, a ladder. <laughs> I need to scooch it up and over that on both sides, which is surprisingly tricky. Hello, so this is day two Morgan popping in to say that I finished up the rest of the sewing of the side seam uh, for the second seam, because the first one I did most of the sewing from the outside. For the second one, I actually went ahead and flipped it inside out and then continued sewing with the exact same stitch. And I feel like that produced nicer results on the outside. So I think that if you were to do this same project, I recommend sewing it from the inside. So it is functionally done. I can close up the purse, cinch it tight, hang it from my belt if I were to so choose, and be done. However, <laughs> there are some decorative elements that I would still like to put into play, specifically three little tassels hanging from the bottom edge, which will be very cute, very good, and then I think after a, a little bit of cleanup work, we will be all done. In order to get the tassels to this current state, what I did was take a bit of DMC floss, because it's what I have on hand, opened it up to make it a circle that might require a bit of fudging to get all of the loops correctly arranged around. There we go. Not quite there, but close enough. So. Eventually, once you have it a neat circle, I simply put a tie at the three corners like this. I just looped it around and put a knot at each corner and then snipped it in the middle. So that is how I ended up with these. Now, they're not quite in full tassel state just yet. Next, I'm going to put a little band around the middle, and I am going to go ahead and use 
my fancy gold thread here. We'll start with a fairly short piece and then I'm going to tie a knot around this just to get it started and then I'm going to wrap around. So now that we have our end point we're going to tie a knot around the tassel. Now we're going to go ahead and thread the other end of this onto a wide eyed needle and then we're going to take our tassel edge here and thread it up through the top of the tassel. Doesn't really matter where. There we go. So now each end of the tassel has been threaded through itself, through the you know tight layer that you do. And you want to try and do this part as firmly as you can. So uh, hopefully that tightness will help hold these two end threads in place. So let's go ahead and snip those off. And that is one tassel. We will of course neaten these ends, but that can wait until we've done all of them. So this is the finished little purse. I think it is stinking cute. It's not quite big enough to hold a cell phone, but it will definitely fit like a wallet and a set of keys, maybe, you know, some lip balm. Really great thing to have with you at events. So stinking cute. I'm really excited to wear this out and about for the first time. And you know, I thought maybe someone else would also like to have a little purse while they're out and about. So while I was ordering this for myself, I also sent a message to Billy and Charlie and asked if they would possibly be interested in giving me an extra one to give away to you guys. And they very kindly agreed, so they sent me a bonus one that I can give away to you guys and I'm also going to go ahead and include some of the Sartor fabric that I ordered for this project. I obviously have plenty more so I will provide with it enough to make a purse just like I did. You guys will have to supply all of your own linings and tassel materials and what have you but I believe in you. You can do the thing. I'll put the full rules for the giveaway down in the description box. It will probably be due one week after the date that this video goes live, and I think that I'm going to make it comment-based. How about since this is near the holiday season full of gift giving for everyone, why don't you leave me a comment with most favorite gift that you've ever given to someone else and why that was so awesome and made you so happy. Do include your Instagram handle so I have a way to message you and uh, you know one week from now I'll use a random comment picker to do that and I'll probably announce it via Instagram as well. I'll probably also put it in the community tab for my page just so that you know there's multiple places to, to see to see that winner. I'm not gonna include anything like you have to subscribe to my channel and like all my videos and follow me on ten different other platforms because you know <laughs> you should subscribe to videos because you are interested in my content and want to see it in the future, not because you want to win some purse parts. So subscribe if you want or don't, whatever works for you. It really is a very cool thing. I've done a little bit of pewter casting as I mentioned earlier and nothing that I've made has turned out this nice. They, they really are good at what they do and uh, I have a lot of Billy and Charlie products including the belt pieces that I'm wearing and a, a bunch of pins and things so I very much enjoy them. If you are interested in checking out my own not as nice uh, pewter casting adventures. I will go ahead and put a playlist with the videos that I have of that. I hope you guys have a lot of fun checking out how that works and kind of the rudimentary basics <laughs> of how to do pewter casting. 
all right you guys have a wonderful day and have fun with that